All right, so real quick, real quick, and I hate to do this in a lot of ways because I don't typically respond to negative comments, and I usually don't get a lot of negative comments. Um, that's really in my own personal life, like in the real world every day, but also online. Um, I'm usually met with a lot of positivity, a lot of understanding. I think people understand what I do, why I do the things I do. I think they understand and see that I have a genuine interest and passion uh, and wanting to share the, do the things I do and wanting to share the things that I do. But once in a while you come across somebody who who doesn't get it or who wants to attack you or who has a nasty attitude towards something that you're doing. Um, which I like again as I said I usually don't like to address these things but the only reason I want to address it is because it coincides so well with my last video having to do with the mathematician Ram Nusha. If you saw my last video it had to do with not downplaying yourself and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about that and mention that um, but this is another area of the conversation I didn't have in that video and I want to touch on it here because this this situation has to do with the social aspect and ramifications when it comes to pursuing something that you're passionate about or something that's intellectual or something that's, uh, I don't know, cons considered to be high-minded or whatever it is, okay? You're not always going to be met with positivity from people when, one, when you're trying to improve yourself, but when you're trying to improve yourself doing something difficult, you will find some pushback. So my video about Ramanujan had to do with, Ramanujan was a, uh, a self-taught mathematician that ended up uh, contributing to the field of pure mathematics. The story of that, and I titled the, the video, You Could Be the Next Ramanujan, not in some kind of fluffy or, you know, way. Not to say that you're going to become a, a pure mathematician. Not to say that you're going to contribute to some kind of field and do all this thing or that you're going to win a Nobel Prize. My point is that you never know what can come from your self-study. There's people on this YouTube channel because of videos that I posted having to do with book reviews on electronics that have expressed their 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 either long-held interest or their, their um, newfound interest in learning electronics. And what I'm saying is don't downplay your own interest and in, in self-study because you never know where it's going to take you in life. And that was my point about Ramanujan. Now keep in mind that Ramanujan is not the only person in the world that has gained anything from self-study. He's not the only mathematician. He's not the only there's pl engineer. I don't, there's plenty of people that have gained an uh, immense amount of progress in their life from self-study and I'm actually one of them and that's one of the points that I why I why I wanted to share that story about Ramanujan the only reason I picked him is because again if you're familiar with discourse if you're familiar with the discourse of of mathematics most people just think math is 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 quantitative but there is a there is a humanity side to it too. There is a qualitative side to it. There's a descriptive side. There's a side, there's a history to it. And, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about a mathematician, the history of certain mathematicians. So when you talk about the history of certain mathematicians, you can track the history or even some physicists and things like that. You can track um, and see where are the ones in history that were notable figures who, who didn't come from a certain school or didn't have uh, an academic background. Part of that is my own story, and that's why I do these things and share it with you guys. I'm, I'm academically trained in the humanities, in philosophy, philosophy of science, philosophy of religion, in the humanities side. I'm not formally, well, I mean, I, I am now and beginning more formal tr education in science, but my formal education is not in, in science. My formal education is at the collegiate level is in, is in the humanities. But I was a phys I was a physics teacher, and I still do that stuff. I'm still I'm an algebra tutor. I was actually just tutoring some children um, while this guy was commenting. <laughs> just coming back on my way from that. You know, so if you don't think this is personal, I mean, it's very personal because this is one of the things I I have a huge pet peeve about. One of my biggest pet peeves in life is about is people like that who who get offended by others who are trying to show their best selves or trying to um, 
share something interesting or trying to expound and expand on their intellectual pursuits and intellectual things that, that, that they find interesting. Okay? And that's why I wanted to make this video and extend my message about Ramanujan to this kind of social element. And this is, this is why I said don't play yourself down. Not only what I meant by that was not only don't play yourself down because you don't know where your, your self-study pursuits will lead. Because again, I am the living example of that. I've never, I, didn't, I don't think I've talked about this very much, but you know, this is also a music channel. I'm also self-taught in music. I'm not saying, you know, I think a guy like that thinks he's, he's just trying to show off. He's trying to, no, I'm trying to show you that you don't know where your own education will take you. You don't know where your own self-study would take you. I've been playing guitar since I was a kid. I've been playing guitar for 20 years. I didn't know that at this point in my life, the last 10 years of my life, I've been supporting myself mostly on the, the, the money I make playing music, which has afforded me the opportunity to go back to school. It's afforded me the opportunity to start businesses and do other things. So playing, learning, that time I spent 20 years ago in my room by myself practicing guitar uh, paid out in dividends for me. Incalculable. I mean, tremendously. Tremendously. Not because I'm famous, not because I have some top selling CD. No, it's because it afforded me the opportunity to, to make a living and, uh, and pursue other interests. I, didn't, I wasn't planning on that. I didn't try to achieve that. But through my own self-study, I gained something later on that was extremely beneficial to my life. That's why I tell these stories. That's why I get in here and talk about this. That's why I talk about Ramanujan. He did something, he pursued his own individualistic intellectual interests for a long portion of his life and he ended up making a contribution that changed who he was. Music changed my circumstances. It's not just music, again. I'm trained in philosophy, but I, I, I got a, I, I, I was I was a, I was a physics teacher. How'd you get into physics and, ma and math if you were if you were uh, in the humanities? Well, that's because I was self-taught in electronics and I had a background in aviation, so I had actually a lot of uh, um, extensive physics um, uh, knowledge, not formally but from self-study from years of self-study, and that was enough. I had enough to show to where, where, where people were confident enough to hire me to do things, like teach and do other things. Yeah, that happens. I know today that kind of stuff is not as common. Like um, <clears throat> to, get into, to get into certain fields now, it's harder you know, to get into certain things if you don't have that specific degree to get in. I understand. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, there's, still other, there's still opportunities out there where you can still do things where, you're, where your own acumen your own self-study and acumen still can amount to something. That's my point, is that don't sell yourself short. And furthermore, like I said, in, 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 in conjunction with, with an individual like this, like a naysayer like this, someone that, that wants to downplay or degrade what you're doing, that's my point about this, is don't play yourself down. Not only don't play yourself down in the sense of you don't know where this is going to take you or how it could impact your life, or and don't... Uh, don't under, underestimate or downplay. Maybe you have some other interests that might be very good for you to pursue that's not electronics related. Maybe you just want to learn some little things in electronics. Maybe you just want to just know a little bit of something. But maybe there's something else that you're really interested about, but you're too um, afraid to pursue, not because you're in, afraid and in, you're intimidated intellectually by the material, but because you might be socially intimidated because you don't want to embrace this thing um, that's like a high intellectual and that has some kind of high intellectual engagement or whatever because you're afraid of how other people might treat you or whatever, right? Like the people like this, like this guy is like the, is the person that, that, that tries to bully the guy that's an overachiever in school or that does well or wants to, or wants to you know, he wants to go after, after school and, and sit in the math teacher's office and try to learn. You know, I was, I was, I loved all my teachers. I used to hang out with my teachers all the time. My business partner, she's a, she was a, she's a, she's retired. She's a retired teacher. 
So I love everything that has to do with education. That's me. I always hung out. You could, you, you know, you want, you really want to go that far. You want to meet people that I went to, went to high school with, and people I went to grade school with. They will tell you, I was always close to all my teachers. I was always close to older people, but especially older people who were teachers. You know, teaching is not teaching is not um, just a profession. It's a vocation, and it's something that has to do with your personality. It's a personality trait. That's a personality thing. Some people just think, I don't know where people think how the world became the way it is. The world isn't just dictated by, I guess because things have become so commodified or industrialized, people just think things are made just because they make money or something. There's an element of that, but also things happen in the world. People do certain things because of their nature, because of, of, of their inborn nature and personality. Okay, is why we have certain roles and certain certain positions. It's because of the personality and inborn traits of how human beings act and how they interact with, with one another. And how they should, because having vocations like teaching is not a bad thing, is it? But we don't appreciate those things sometimes. Sometimes people, people, low minded, um, superficial people think that when Someone who's intelligent wants to talk about something intelligent that they're just trying to show off the fact that they're intelligent. And you're just, you're just, you're just not very intelligent, if that's what you think. If that's what you think, that that's what happens. Uh, you know, and even more so, this is exactly why people like me make YouTube channels. Don't you understand, There's people make YouTube channels so they can communicate about things that they can't communicate about in ordinary, everyday life. Okay, I was just at a country club. Get this. How about this? I was just at a country club playing music. I played jazz at, at, at restaurants and country clubs. I was just at a country club recently. One I've been playing at for years. There's a fellow here there that moved moved down here a couple years ago, and he's he's just a, he's a crack up of a guy. I always see him. You know, we we laugh, we always have fun, and we always make a note to you know talk to each other. And um, that night, the other night, I spent a little more time with him. And I found out he studied physics. <laughs> he studied physics. He became an engineer, and he has he because he's got a company doing. It has to do with manufacturing and many managing manufacturing regulations and stuff. But at any rate, you see what I'm saying? Like, and he was he was very he was so the point of that was. We, we we talked for a while. We went out, we hung out, and he was so appreciative of the fact that he could talk to somebody else about physics because he's not around people that could talk to, talk about physics with. And we talked about physics and we talked about all this stuff and we had a good time. That's part of the reason why people get on YouTube. You know, one thing I've always told myself is that I will never allow myself, this is why I'm so passionate about this talk, but I want to share it, is for you guys and also to get some of these messages across. Because one thing I've told myself a long time ago is I will never get so disassociated from myself or from life or from humanity that I feel that I have to do what so many other people do that's become so common in this country and this world now where, where people are feeling like they have to literally hide in their car, get into their car, and get into their car and make a video. Well, you get that? Like, I don't think that really resonates. People People think that's so normal, they don't understand it. People feel like they have to hide so much of themselves. They can't have conversations so much with other people around them, or they can't, they don't have the opportunity to converse about things, that they feel, they feel so, they feel that kind of energy so much so that they have to put themselves in their car you know, and make a little video to, and make it all in, in, in private so no one sees them, no one can hear them, and they have to share it online, and maybe someone will see it, and then they have this little community, maybe, or people that they can talk to. Like, that's how disassociated we've become from each other, and not just each other, but we've become so disassociated from talking about things that matter. Talking about things that matter objectively, like things that are important to talk about, but also being disassociated from talking about things that that um, that have a higher uh, substance level of substance or or a higher level of, of intellectual engagement, and it's those kind of people, that kind of guy, that gets on here and commenting, acting, you know, he says all these things like, "Oh, you're just trying to look like you're smart," and all this. 
it's those kind of people that you don't want to succumb to. It's those kind of people that I make videos about Ramanujan. Because you don't know, Ramanujan could have had people like that around him as well. You know, Einstein could have had people like that as, as well. People always look at these people, you don't think that anybody goes through any trials or tribulations, the people that put them down. Well, this guy's trying to put me down for making YouTube videos talking about electronics. This is my point. Don't let people, don't let anything let you put you down. Don't let other people put you down um, against something that you want to pursue. That's my point about this. This is not meant to be an inspirational or motivational um, channel, but I have that in me, and, and there's just, it's not only that I have that in me, but this is just something that I will take to my grave, I will die on any hill about. I don't care. I just don't care. It's just if there's any message in my life, and there's anything that anybody is ever going to get me to speak out about, it's going to be the fact that you should never put limitations on yourself or your intellectual pursuits or learning learning in general this is goes back to exactly this guy is like oh well you you know teachers he comes up with that stupid quote we could talk about this another time where you know people that people that can't do teach people that teach are typically people who like to learn a lot and people who really want to learn things at a high level they tend to want to teach because that's how you learn things at a high level people that know things at the highest level are typically teachers typically PhDs right that's where our most refined knowledge, our most refined knowledge tends to come from PhDs or practitioners. And practitioners tend to also learn from PhDs. That's the thing. See, you want to, people want to get so sly about these things, but don't really... I know where that quote comes from. It comes from the tension between, you know, I guess the, the industrial world and the academic world. But there is not an industry that operates at a high level that doesn't that doesn't take part in in, in, in in academic research. That doesn't that doesn't feed off of academic research. It doesn't have who do you think? I mean who do you think does does the work? Who do you think does the research? Who do you think comes you think that engineering firms and engineering companies they don't they don't have they don't have PhDs that do their designs? You think someone fresh out of out of college goes to Boeing and he designs the whole airplane? With a bachelor's degree, he designs the whole airplane. <laughs> it's not how it happens. So my message about this is again not only playing, not 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 just avoiding playing yourself down and acting like, oh well, I'm just learning this. No, embrace your pursuit of knowledge. And also, don't fall victim to people like this who try to um, assuage you from participating in intellectual things. Because that will happen. This is what I'm trying to show you, is that I'm, I'm in my 30s. I'm pursuing my second bachelor's degree. I'm, I've been on track to do my PhD for some time. I haven't done it because... I've been wanting to refine it, and it's changed, and I'm now getting more, um, getting, you know, dialing it down to now where I've got where I want to be, and I know what department I want to do it in and what it's going to consist of. So, good. It's good. It's in a very good place. But um, I'm at this level, and I, I'm at this point in my life, and I still have people coming, acting like this. And I've never really reacted to it. I've never made a video like this. But I, I just, I, I feel it necessary for other people to see and to address it because it's so absurd. And I'm trying to show you that it can happen at any time, any, 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 any level that you're at, any time in your life, you know. And I make this, to sh again, to show you guys, you know, the potential of what can come of it. The potential of what can come. I'm not bragging about, oh yeah, look, I got all these degrees and I'm going to get my, my second bachelor's and all that stuff. I'm trying to show you, yeah, there's there's still potential in learning. You can learn, you can go back to school at a, at a later date in life. This is supposed to be, all of this is supposed to be uh, encouragement. I show you these books for encouragement. I do these lessons for encouragement. Because I like to learn and I love to share things that I learn. 
And I want to encourage other people to learn. Learn about anything. It just so happens to be about electronics. And the, the electronics videos that I happened to put out a couple weeks ago happened to get a lot of views, so they got a lot of engagement. So now we're talking about electronics. But there's, you know, my, my intellectual world is, is, is mostly caught up in, in philosophy, which, which, you know, a primary PhD topic I have in philosophy has to do with ethics and technology. So those are the kinds of things that I, I think about most of the time, ethics, technology, agriculture, you know, engineering and agriculture, and things of that nature. This is part of what I'm saying, you never know what things are going to take you. After I, after I taught physics, I started a farm, and that led me, farming led me back to engineering. This is where there's an allegory here, there's a story here. My story is indicative of what I'm trying to um, impart to you about your own development and your own interest and pursuits of not knowing where things are going to take you. That's my point. And that maybe some of your interests, your interests will, will coalesce and, 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 and some of them will, will complement each other to the point where now you have something even greater to give, something bigger to do, something more worth pursuing. That's it, you know. I appreciate you for listening. I appreciate you for watching. Again, if there's anything that you take, that's what I mean. I don't give. I don't. I don't care if you never watch an electronics video again. I don't care if you don't learn another thing in electronics or or math or whatever. You know. Well, I want to show you for a second. I just want to show you a different attitude. You see what this guy could have took from this stuff. He was complaining about how the uh, practical electronics book um, was too complicated for a layperson. What he could have said, this is the difference in attitude, what he could have said is, hey, some of this stuff is difficult, but I think I'm going to try to learn it. Just for the sake of understanding. You know, the other day I was watching a video from Stanford University on machine learning. I'm not a computer scientist. But you just listen for what? For understanding. See, you see, peer into a different world to see what you can understand about something else that's different than what you know about. Isn't that life? Like, to me, this is life, but some people don't correlate that with life. To me, learning is life. But some people think learning is about trying to look a certain way. <laughs> they think learning is everything is about, or it's about, okay, I want to learn this so I can get a job, so I can work this place, and I can get this, and I can get paid this much, and blah, blah, blah. Like, to learning, I thought learning was about life. I thought learning was life. I thought that's what it is. But again, that goes back to my disposition. That's my disposition. You don't have to have that disposition, but to respect the fact that there's some people like myself that have that disposition. You know, it, it bothers me because it's, it's the same kind of spirit. The, the person that has that kind of spirit is the same kind of person that has a spirit that are very prejudiced against religious people. You know, they say, well, why do those people have to do that? Why do they have to, oh, they just, like, they're just doing that because they think they're good. Or they want to be better people. They just think they want to be good. Why is people trying to aspire to be better people a bad thing? And why, why does it bother you that other people have some kind of ritual or practice or belief that, that centers them and, and gives them meaning? It's probably because you don't have any meaning in your life. Or you don't have anything that's meaningful to you. Go find something meaningful. That's my point of making these videos. That's why when you see me on there getting giddy and happy about sharing electronics, I'm trying to impart to you to find something that makes you happy. <laughs> find something that, makes, that, that gets you excited, that's, that's healthy. There's a caveat to that. Don't find something out there that's, that's useless and, and destructive and going to harm you or somebody else or, or that, that placates to some kind of you know, low-level stupidity. You know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of heathenism, you know, there's a lot of heathenism in, our, in our society. That's the other thing that drives me about this is because this is the kind of stuff you get mad about. You get mad about a, a guy showing, sharing, sharing electronics knowledge on YouTube, doing book reviews with all the garbage that you see in society this is the stuff that you chose that you choose to pull over and you have to write nasty comments about it doesn't make any sense there's tons of stuff I don't like and like I told this guy I'm very I, I don't even comment positive I don't comment online much at all ever about anything even if I like it if I like something I just I subscribe and I follow that person I rarely say say anything. I definitely don't say anything negative. I don't really understand that. 
Why? If something's not for you, it's not for you. You respect yourself. That's myself. That's what my, my final part of my point is. Respect yourself. Respect yourself enough to to pursue your own pursuits, and respect yourself enough not to fall whim to somebody's negativity about you wanting to be on a higher level of understanding, acquiring higher knowledge, and being more sophisticated or more engaged in something that's sophisticated. Because you have to think about this. This is what's so wild about this. Why is it so normal? People think it's so normal. Why is it so normal? This is something I've never understood my whole life. Why is it so normal? Why do human beings try to dissuade other human beings from, from, from detailed engagement, from, from sophisticated thought? You ever think about that? Like, those are the things that bother me about the world. I don't know. You know, people talk, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, all this. The stuff I can't understand, the stuff that bothers me, is this stuff like this. Like, people, people that are bothered by other people trying to improve themselves. That's what I don't understand. Because education is all about self-improvement. People don't think of it. Like, don't you understand that? Like going to college is all about self-improvement. We have all these stupid ideas about what it is. Oh, it's about going to frat. It's about joining the club. It's about playing football. It's not. It's about self-improvement. And playing football, doing sports can be a part of self-improvement. Absolutely. But the key aspect of academics is really about self-improvement. So if you don't like my book recommendation, the best thing for you to do is improve yourself enough and your knowledge base enough to where you can start sharing some books. Instead of trying to get my, on my back because you felt like it was, it was inappropriate for me to share a book that had some calculus in it that was uh, meant to be for you know an introductory lesson. And part of that is also don't blame me, blame the publishers, because that book, Practical Electronics for Inventors, is made for inventors. It's made for people that are, are, are that don't necessarily have a PhD in in, in 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 electrical engineering. So I'm not I'm not way off for, for sharing that. And not only that, it's not my responsibility, you know. I understand what you what you what you mean here. Okay, yeah, you, you know, you're sharing and you know, share something that's quote unquote more legitimate or whatever. But um I'm not responsible for that work. They did that work and that's a highly acclaimed book. Like anybody that, that anybody that has good sense in electronics knows that that's a book to be appreciated. So when you come and you whine and you kick and scream like, Oh, this is too complicated and I can understand it, how could you do that to me? It doesn't make any sense. No one's doing anything to you. If you feel like you couldn't understand it or it wasn't going to fit for you, find something else. Don't get mad that I shared it. Don't get mad that they published that that in that way. I and Obviously, I guess you haven't seen any of my other videos because I've shown books that are ten times simpler than that. I showed a book that that I had when I was a kid growing up with electronics and when I talked about how it, I didn't I always disliked the book because I thought it wasn't complicated enough so this is part of my thing is that some things appeal differently to different people some people some things you know you know what really dictates a lot of life and human behavior and relationships and and how you can really find to understand more about yourself and others is to really define, really take a look at and define what you what you gravitate towards and what others run away from. So the people on this channel that appreciate this stuff are people who are who are gravitated by complexity. I'm a person who's gravitated by complexity. That's why I have a lot of intellectual pursuits, because I'm gravitating I'm gravitated by complexity. Some other people are repelled by complexity and they're more gravitated towards simplicity. You have to know that about yourself and respect that and respect the fact that other people gravitate towards complex even if, even if they don't have the whole thing yet, even if they're just learning it. There's people on this channel, they're just learning but they're okay with 
the integral calculus in there being there. there. It makes it more interesting to them to want to learn it, that there's complexity in there. What you're showing me, what you're showing me and you're kicking and screaming about it is just that complexity doesn't appeal to you as much. Okay, go find something less complex. I actually have books that are less complex on my channel, but, you know, we're off the channel. I'm blocked. But go find something that's simpler. It's not a problem. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, there's lots of stuff in life. There's other opportunities. There's other options. You know? This also goes back to... Part of the reason why I made the video about Ramanujan also was also to motivate you guys to, to keep pursuing your own development and learning on your own. Yes, I'm here. I want to help you guys and other people on YouTube who are I'm here to help you and the internet's there. But sometimes I feel like people are asking me these questions that they can answer themselves. There was a guy on here who was just asking me about a certain circuit. I said, just look it up. And he looked it up. He's like, oh, well, yeah, I found it. Thanks. I'm like, yeah, dude, just look it up. Don't rely on, you know, I, when they find someone, I, and I appreciate it. What happens is you, when you find somebody that you feel like you can relate to or that you feel like is in a good position to 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 help you then sometimes you cling on to it and that's part of my message don't you know don't get too lost in in, in in relying on somebody go just go learn it because a lot of a lot of engineering this is something I think that's remiss like you know in a lot of ways but also from just like this guy and these comments a lot of engineering is about not knowing everything but it's about how to find the answer Okay, it's about how to find the answer. So I cannot, I cannot go. I'm not going to go out of my way. Like this guy's telling me, like, oh, you can't prove it. Like you got to prove that you know all this stuff. I'm not going to go out of my way to prove something to you. Like if I'm not, if I'm not building something or working on something, I'm not going to go out of my way to prove it or do this or that. For what? Not just for the social element, but for for the other for the part of it. That's not what that's not what engineering is about. It's not just about proving things to yourself. <laughs> That's not what you do. You solve problems that are pertinent to something that you're building or some kind of project or some kind of goal that you have. There's tons of stuff that I'm building here on the farm that I'm working on that I'm, yeah, that have engineering problems built into them and maybe I'll share them here. I've had other avenues of which I'd share it on, like, you know, my farming page is where I mostly do that, but, you know, I keep a lot of my farming life private so I don't even post a lot of stuff on there. But that's what it's, it, engineering is, is about figuring things out yourself, essentially. And how to, in, in creating the tools, understanding the tools to figure things out yourself. That's why there's a lot of math. To understand all the different kinds of math that will help you get the answers that you might need to seek at some point. It's not about knowing everything. It's about knowing where the knowledge is. It's about knowing where to find the knowledge. That's the thing people don't understand about education. It's not. And that was my point about when I read the video about Ramanujan and when I said this was the point I knew that I had it in electronics when I was in college. What I meant by what I said when I said I had it, that meant what I was talking about was when I realized that it was second nature to me, when I realized that I knew where to look for the knowledge. If there was something I didn't know, I knew how to figure it out. That's what I mean by I had it. Just like in music. If I don't know something, I've had enough experience with that to where if I don't know something, I know where to find it. That's where true expertise comes from. That's when you know that you've mastered or near mastered a certain subject or area. It's not about knowing it all. No one knows it. No one knows every song in the, in the world. <laughs> No one can play every song that's going to be created. <laughs> right, you see what I mean? Nothing, nothing has it all. It's not about having it all. You never have all of anything. The richest person in the world doesn't have all the money in the world. Don't you see? Like, <laughs> the person with the most beautiful wife in the room doesn't have the most beautiful wife in every room. <laughs> right? It's like, you understand? Know, it's like, that's life. That's life. You don't have all of everything, and if you ever do, you're not going to have it all the time. It's not about having it all the time. It's about knowing where to look and how to attain, how to attain it, how to obtain the answers. 
So you got to, this is why I'm not, uh, you know, so to any people that are watching this, I'm not being, I'm not trying, being cold when I don't respond to uh, some question that you have. It's just, I'm not responding because of this. I want you, to, you need to just go out and find the answer yourself. Because that's what engineering is about. You have to go out and find the answer yourself so you know where to look and you, you go through the process of learning it and understanding where the information is and how you decipher it. It's not, it's just not, it's not all just a, like a one word answer, just all of you, you know? It's a process. Engineering is really a process of how to do something, how to figure something out. So what you're doing, this is what I'm saying, don't downplay what you're doing because you are doing, you are partly doing engineering. Partly what you're doing is you're engineering even the process of you learning about engineering. But it's not given to you, you're not just given a curriculum. Now you're, you're engineering, and even that was engineered, don't you understand? Like all these things are just made up. Like the engineering program curriculum is just a curriculum that was made up that, that got codified and then people sanctioned it as the curriculum of, to use uh, for engineering programs and then it's, it's certified by a certain board and that's what they use as the criteria. That's just the criteria. That doesn't mean that's all the knowledge. That's just a certain criteria that satisfies a certain institution's standards. That's it. But that was too constructive. That was engineering. You can engineer your own way through under, to, to your path in engineering. And this is part of what I'm showing you. I'm showing you part of, okay, this is how I engineer my path to engineering. You know, and I share it because it's a non-likely story in a, some, in a certain way, right? It's not like a, I didn't just say, oh yeah, I went to this school, I did this. No, no, I'm showing you, oh, this is what I learned when I was you know, when I was growing up, and this is the book that I had, and this is another book that I had, and you know, this led me to this, and that led me to that. This is what I'm showing you. The path and journey through through knowledge acquisition, like I said, or through, you know, through self-study, Anyway, again, a lot of messages in there that I wanted to communicate, and I'm actually really kind of, I'm really glad that this happened because it gets, it's given me the opportunity to talk about a lot of things that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. You know, a lot of these things I want to address for a long time because I feel like they're so pervasive, especially when it comes to people wanting to better themselves, and especially things about the intellectual life that some people just don't respect the fact that other people like to engage only in intellectual things. And people think that they're trying to, I don't know, look a certain kind of way or play into a certain thing. Which is sad because usually it's those people that have, they're just showing that they have no idea. And they don't have a thing that themselves that they're passionate about enough to understand why someone else would behave that way. Which is sad. And I think that's what's probably the most sad thing of all around this is that people don't understand that. When people want to share things. Like, I have an utmost respect for a lot of, especially the YouTubers that do this kind of stuff, like intellectual things or things that have to do with math and science, because that's coming from a genuine interest to want to impart knowledge and, 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 and participate in something that you care about, that, you know, that's wholesome. I don't think that's what you, you know, I have to, before we go, you just have to state that. Part of this is I want to share something and engage with people in a wholesome, productive manner, because we don't get to, we don't get to participate with people in a wholesome, productive manner on a day-to-day -day basis oftentimes, especially in the way in our society today. You know, when you go online, there's a bunch of naked women all the time. And someone's dancing, shaking their butt. Most of the things that we have in our society are perverse. It's hard to do, it's hard to, to engage with people on, on, on a, not an intellectual basis, but just on a, on a wholesome basis. So when you see an individual like me wanting to talk about something that's wholesome, and you recognize that, and that's and, that, and it bothers you. And that's what I'm saying. That's the kind of questions that we need to tackle about the human condition. That's something for at the symposium. That's something for for philosophy. But I want you guys to think about that stuff. You ever wonder about these things? Why is it that things that are good, things that are wholesome, it bothers people? But if I was on here, you know, talking about I don't know, smoking weed or doing drugs or doing something stupid, people would just be like, oh yeah, I mean that's cool. Just talk about yeah, man. Yeah. But I want to talk about math. I want to talk about science, I want to talk about engineering, I want to talk about electronics, and it's like, oh man. Now I can't say that I know all, of you know, most everybody has been great, and, you know, I know you guys know where I'm coming from because I think you guys get it, the people on this channel get it, but there's always somebody with, a, with that kind of attitude, and I just thought I'd address it because it's just, 
it needs to be called out and it needs to be called out for what it is and it needs to be recognized and again going back to my original point that's something to watch out for and that has to do with my last video I made about Ramanujan it's not just not just um, not downplaying your own pursuit but not letting other people downplay your own pursuit because you never know where it's going to take you and how it's going to impact your life you know never let someone assuage you from from your intellectual pursuits or from from being more detail oriented and sophisticated because it, as perverse as it is as inhumane as it is I think right as inhumane as it is there's an attitude in humans for whatever reason I guess it has to do with maybe a competitive nature or something it has to do with something like that to where people don't like others that are trying to self improve some people don't like that and again we know that by just the fact of how we have to hide and that's what I'm saying don't hide this is part of me doing this is not, I'm not hiding and I've never really had to hide I've never really hid I've never adopted to that because I've never been that kind of person and that's why this kind of stuff irritates me because part of what this guy is telling me he's trying to say hey man I want you to get more com more uncomfortable with showing who you are I want you to get more uncomfortable with showing um, your intelligence I want you to get more uncomfortable with more uncomfortable with showing talking about intellectual things and hey, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that I don't have to know everything to, to, to engage in something intellectually. I don't have to have every um, problem in the universe figured out or something. That's not what intellectualism is. It's not what it is. And nobody does. Nobody has every answer to everything. No one has everything figured. So it doesn't matter. What you're asking is not even, it's not even real. That's what sucks about it. Is that when people come with these kind of propositions, they're trying to give you something that's it's not even real. You know, that's what, it's not even real what you're talking about. It's not even real. Anyways, I appreciate it again. Thank you guys, not for watching, but thank you for pursuing your interests. And keep pursuing your interests. And don't let negative people ever get in the way of your self-improvement. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys later.